Hiya folks, Carl James here from Electric Media Madness, joining me for another insightful, very special insightful today because this is one of my favourites and I am joined by my very special guest, Kieran Woodhouse. How you doing mate? Very good, how are you? I'm not too bad, thank you, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this is a rare treat for me, but we'll get into why in a minute. <laughs> Before we do that, I just want to tell our viewers and listeners about your research. You're a paranormal investigator and researcher. You're an author of a number of books, An Introduction to Paranormal Investigation and Experiences of a Paranormal Investigator. You also host the Paranormal Paradigm Podcast, the three Ps, <laughs> uh, and mm -hmm. the Collective Conspiracy Show. There's an excellent documentary, which I highly recommend checking out as well, called uh, Haunting in Essex. You also co-run the Free Thinking Society. They have a number of regular meetups and guest speakers in the Starbridge area. So if anyone wants to check that out, I did a talk back in August there as well. So please help them support them as well. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to plug before we get going? Anything you want to mention to people that you do or anything like that? <laughs> no, no, you've, you've, you've done a good enough job there. So I highly recommend people check out all that stuff because it's it really is worth taking the time to look at. Now, normally... When I come across paranormal investigators and researchers, <laughs> I'm very open minded, but very, very sort of like at arm's length. But recently I looked into your stuff and there was two things, really, which is why I wanted to talk to you about. I am really on the same page with you with this, how you've interpreted a lot of the phenomenon that goes on. This isn't just paranormal stuff, isn't it? This is like UFO type stuff as well yeah. and things like that. Yeah. 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 So we can come to that in a second. But also, and I don't think you actually mentioned it, but in looking at that listening to you speaking i thought but this guy likes twin peaks you know and then when we met up <laughs> you was like a bleep bit of love twin peaks you know so i thought right that's it gotta get him on gotta get him on because uh, yeah yeah it's uh this i think the, the the stuff that i tend to look into um there are paranormal guys out there that do but there's a lot of people that are very old school ghosts are just dead people type of uh, theorists yeah um so they, they don't tend to kind of explore the things that, that i look at okay so what i was thinking maybe was if you could I mean, it's very difficult to sort of condense it down initially just for people before we get into the twin peaks stuff because we can tie all that in then as well and if you want to just give people a general idea of that that where you are with that basically if you if, if it's possible to do that <laughs> um explain my theories yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you can always broaden show, it out that's as a, we go that's on. A show in it, yeah. That's a show in itself. Um, I mean, I will really, put some links I, in the description for videos that you've done talks okay. as well. So okay. Can... I, I guess my my foray into the paranormal world came about from my interest in um, the nature of reality. It was always my main interest, I, and I was always into UFOs more than I was ghosts. Um, and a lot of synchronicity happened that kind of pushed me down the paranormal way. Um, but I still maintain a huge interest in ghosts and the nature of reality and conspiracies and stuff like that. Mm. So I think what that did is it allowed me to look at the paranormal world from a, a different angle. And like I just said, there's a lot of people that are very kind of very strict that ghosts are dead people and it can't be anything else. And they're not, they're not really willing to, to come outside of their comfort zone. So I started looking at it from the nature of reality and and frequencies was my uh, was my introduction really. So it you know I think it, at the time and I know that it's changed now. Scientists have actually realised that it, it's much smaller, but it, at the time it was ninety nine point nine five percent of um, the, the the room that we're in we can't see or interact with. Mm. Um, so it's zero point zero five percent what we call visible light. So there's 99.95% of the room that you're in now, Carl, that, that you can't see or hear or yeah. interact with. But yeah. does that mean that there's nothing there? Or oh, absolutely not. And uh, I always use the analogy of a radio station. So if you're listening to Radio 1, um, you're tuned into that frequency range and that's what you're that's what you're hearing. It doesn't mean that Radio 2 doesn't exist. It does. It's just that you're not, you're not tuning into it. The second you change and tune into Radio 2, um that doesn't mean radio one doesn't exist it's still there yeah. you just you, you can't see it you can't hear it so there's all this stuff going on around us um and i think sometimes when you're experiencing something to do with a ghost or a ufo or a cryptid it could be that you've listened to two radio stations at the same time and you're tuning into both frequencies so our world and, and one of their worlds and um I, I think that's what mediums can do or what psychics can do and you're almost lifting the veil slightly to see what's going on. And then yeah. just like your car radio will kind of, you know, you might have it where it fuzzes around and you get two songs playing at the same time and then it fixes itself. 
I think that's what happens. So people will say um, the UFO disappeared before their eyes or Bigfoot walked behind the tree but didn't come out the other side. Uh, he did come out the other side. It's just that you're not tuned into that frequency anymore, so you can't see it. Same with the UFO. It didn't just disappear. It's still there. You're, you're yeah. just not tuning into it anymore. Yeah. So I brought that that kind of thought process into the paranormal world. And, and it's amazing when you don't just put yourself onto a little postage stamp in terms of a, a theory. It's amazing what you can um, find out and what you can explore yeah. and, yeah. and theorize. So instead of just saying, right, yes, all dead people, all, all ghosts are dead people, I'm now saying, well, actually, where I'm at currently with my theory, because it's ever changing, is that um, I, I, at the moment, don't think that they are dead people at all. I think it's a, a collective consciousness, a form of energy um and people are almost manifesting their own hauntings because if we create our own reality which i believe we do mm. then we create our own hauntings and as people will see if they watch that documentary you mentioned mm. the more hauntings that i begin to investigate the more i begin to realize that there's always something going on in the background there's negative energy, energy there's, yeah. um which is very twin peaks based actually but there's, there's is, this kind yeah. of negative there's this there's this negative energy and all the um, teenagers going through through puberty or adolescence and there's arguments between the mum and the dad and that's when they have the height of their activity and if they stop arguing or if they you know go on holiday and, and spend time in a happy place then they don't get any activity and then the mm. second they start to to put out negative thoughts they get the activity again mm -hmm. so I'm at a point now where I think a lot of hauntings are manifested that's not to say that the experiences aren't real because the people are clearly mm. experiencing something yeah, yeah. but they're being manifested by those people yeah 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 um so yeah so that's a like i say it's a show in itself but that, that's kind of yes a, a yeah, shortened yeah. Like a version snapshot. of yeah yeah mm. yeah that's great thank you for that yeah yeah um it can be very disturbing for some people because very like you say people are very pigeonholed into yeah. certain ways of thinking I think a lot of it's been around for a long time in that way of thinking as well. So it's very hard to break that. Certainly yeah. where religion's concerned, you're talking thousands of years of indoctrination, aren't you, into certain belief yep. systems and that. So it doesn't mean to say that we should necessarily throw the baby out with the bathwater, as it were. No, no, no. There's other ways that we can interpret these things. And very rarely does any of this, particularly in mainstream religion, I find, the whole thing of energy and consciousness is like, no, 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 don't look at that. Don't look at that. You know, it's like that's because that empowers people. You know, it's something that it's that's right. You're 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 seen as some kind of hippie spiritualist, mm. new age type person if you begin to talk about consciousness and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And and again, and I'm not the first person to be looking at this oh. kind of thing. Um, you know, just just want to throw that out there. I've not pioneered this. You know, people like John Keel and stuff have been doing this kind of thing for years. Um, yeah, David yeah. Icke, I guess, to a degree. Um, but like the the problem is that like you say so so people are so ingrained in their beliefs um i mean i i've been kicked out of ghost investigations because i yeah. um on a ouija board i've asked um have you met god and someone's mm. going you can't ask that and mm. it's like well why like is, is why that not one of the it? ultimate yeah. questions yeah. is that not one of the ultimate questions we want to know mm. if there is a god you know i don't really care if if this thing's a boy or a girl or if he wants to hurt us and all this generic rubbish i i want to ask if we're supposedly talking to this entity, this energy, then I want I want to ask important questions, mm, um, mm. questions that we don't have answers to. So, mm. um, but again, th this is difficult for some people to get their heads around, and and, and they they can't comprehend it. And as we've seen in society over the last few years, shall we say, yeah, yes. that when that when that when people's belief systems or comfort zones are um, oh, yeah, attacked. Yeah. Then mm. their backs, they, their backs come up and they they lash out. Yeah, um, it's a fight or flight reaction, isn't it? It's a fight or flight. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Their 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 comfort zone is becoming is under attack and they don't like it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I've I've again worked with a lot of people who always change evidence to fit their theory, which I think is wrong. You need to be changing your theory to fit the evidence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and 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 I think in order to do that, you can't be personally attacked you can't yeah. you know have you think that your belief system is being attacked you, you've got it's got to be fluid mm -hmm. um I, I welcome these kind of attacks i welcome people telling me that um 
there's something wrong with a particular point of my theory because that's how I evolve, you know. Yeah, if, yeah, yeah. Um, if I laid it down right now and said that this is the answer, this is ev- this is everything to do with the paranormal, um, then I'd, I'd be an idiot. Um, yeah, but yeah. there are people there are people out there that do that. They do the same with the ufology as well, and all. Yes. Yeah. Well, te- te- technically, it's all really under that banner of paranormal as well as well, a lot of people would say it isn't, but yeah, I think it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, so there's an argument that I get into with a lot of ufologists because within UFOs, there's the the nuts and bolts guys who think it's a physical craft who's come from a different planet, and then you've got the interdimensional guys who who mm. believe that they're 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 here amongst us. We just can't see them. As I, as I said earlier, I probably fit more into the interdimensional camp, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I do but as yeah, well. Actually, yeah, 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 yeah. But there's these guys that 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 they they they, they like. They actually fight each other about these kind of mm. things. They argue with each other, you know. And actually, if they listen to each other's point of view, they might find that they've got more in common, and they mm. might find that they've they've got the missing piece that helps yeah. to take it know, further forward. Absolutely, to take yeah. it further forward. Yeah. I thought maybe we could at that point then tie it into Twin Peaks. Really, again, is maybe just like give people before we dive in a capsule idea of what Twin Peaks is all about, and that's another <laughs> hard one to do, wow. isn't it? Because yeah. on the surface, it looks like a general murder mystery who done it mm. initially. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's really much more than that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think how I've, I've, I've unsuccessfully got people to watch Twin Peaks. Um, right. The only That's person I know it. that, yeah, the only person I know who's who watched Twin Peaks was my wife and that's because we watched it together yeah there are yeah. other people who i've said watch this and you know they've watched the first couple of episodes and then mm. they they tune out and they they don't they don't quite go with it mm. so um when i'm trying to sell it to them i'm trying to think what do i tell them what do i tell mm. them it's about the problem is i think i lose them when i start talking to them about tulpas uh and interdimensional yeah. <laughs> time travel tulpas so... and <laughs> doppelgangers and yeah, yeah. So, Judy I mean, and <laughs> rituals in the desert and <laughs> rituals in the desert yep so i mean it's essentially um a murder mystery mm. um a murder mystery you know a guy comes in to solve a murder mystery and it then transgresses into this kind of time travel um doppelgangers alien yeah. paranormal type thing that's it really i can't <laughs> yeah i mean for me if, if you're if you're a fan of um the important thing to point out is that it's david lynch so it's incredibly yeah. surreal it is incredibly surreal and the, mm. what you're seeing isn't always necessarily what it's trying to portray if that mm-hmm. makes sense it's not very it's not black and white well episode eight is mm-hmm. but it's not black and white in the <laughs> sense that um they're you know uh, god can we get into it this early i mean f- f- for me Tw- twin peaks was something that david lynch was it was almost an anti tv program that he made it was. The um because the tv programs at the time early 90s um were your kind of <laughs> Your Columbos, your procedurals, um, weren't they? A forty-five minute program where yeah. there's a murder. No one really cares about the person that's been murdered because you've only got forty-five minutes. So there's no kind of deep dive into the person's feelings or the effects that it's had on the family yeah. or the friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then within forty-five minutes, there's a murder. The police have captured that person. They get arrested or killed, and it's all wrapped up with a nice little bow. And mm. then you move on to the next one next week, and you forget about everything that just happened the week before. Yeah. So David Lynch created this program where, at the base of it, yes, it's someone's been murdered, and some guy's got to try and solve it. But that becomes a background issue. It and does. It focuses it? on it focuses on the effects of all the other people, and mm-hmm. what effect has it had on on that that girl's parents, and and, yeah. and what effect has it had on her friends and all of her school friends, um, and it comes and it's almost like he's making he draws it out and we can get maybe into a bit about how he was made to reveal the murderer but he draws it out and he draws yeah, it out yeah, almost yeah. As, as as sticking two fingers up to the to the tv yeah, programs yeah. of those days if you're like a modern audience where you need to know who done it within 45 minutes then twin peaks isn't for you <laughs> no, no 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 if you no. like some really good storytelling some kind of paranormal surreal intrigue then give it a go yeah, yeah. I think when, um, apart from maybe like the soaps and things like that, it was um, it was probably the first time that the long form storytelling had been done, you know, which a lot of the shows subsequently went on to do. I know people talk about Lost and things like that, which I mean, Lost was fine with me. I, I was fine with it until the end. And then obviously when I got into my research, 
JJ Abrams and Damon Lindelof and all that, then I was completely through it. I did throw that out with the bathwater. <laughs> right, <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I can I see the influence like, I love on it a lot. Of- yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. It, you know, it's... Twin Peaks is massively a big inspiration on Lost. You can see that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because those guys, you know, especially like Damon Lindelof and that, they, they, you know, they're into the esoteric, they're into the Velikovsky electric universe, they're into the theosophy, Madame Bovatsky, Crowley and all that. Mark Frost as well is heavily into yes. all that stuff, you know. And yeah, I, would, yeah. I would imagine that David Lynch is, even though I've never actually caught him on interview no. saying, yeah, he's very cagey like is... that. It he's is done some interesting Mark interviews Frost. over the years, though, David Lynch has. I mean, he's asked questions about 9-11 and various yes. other things and that. So, you know, yes. he's, and it was interesting that I found out uh, through Andrew Johnson that um, a number of years back on Red Ash Radio, they had Sean Young, who was obviously in right. Dune, which was David mm-hmm. Lynch, you know, and she'd read Where Did the Towers Go, you know, and that and talked about it on there. Right, and OK. There's lots of synchronicities lining up there. I, th- I think David Lynch is very clued in. But the flip side of David Lynch as well is that you've got this, which is, I, I don't particularly have any problem with meditation, all that kind of thing, you know, but there are some strange connections there with that foundation of his as well. Now, maybe that's the more the money people behind the scenes and it's not him. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I, some people have said he's like a Kubrick, uh, which I think some of it is like that. Some of it, I don't know. But I don't know what you think about that anyway. But um, um... <laughs> the, 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 the transcendental meditation is a big thing for for David Lynch, you know, mm, it's, um, mm. and it's it's clearly a big aspect of um, of Twin Peaks. He clearly brings it into his into his programs and into mm, his films, mm. um, and you know, I've, again, without getting maybe too into it yet, there's there's the, you know the whole uh, purple sea that you see in in season yeah, three, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 that 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 is supposedly the the nothingness that you can achieve when you mm-hmm. when you transcend whilst meditating, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and he's often he he was quoted, wasn't he? As um, you know, when you when you do this transcendental meditation, that's normally where he gets his ideas from. And you, which kind of we wouldn't have any of this if it wasn't. For we that. wouldn't have any of it. No, yeah, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. So he descends, and then he casts a bit. He says he casts a big net, and he mm, captures mm. the fish. You know, and and there was yeah. a fish in the percolator, of course. So yeah, of course. he, um, <laughs> yeah. so, so <laughs> the he's <percolator>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's a, there's a big there's a big influence of transcendental meditation for him. Mm, mm. Um, I, I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. I think it only benefited no. the program. Yeah, I think in terms of what it is, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you were saying about the layers with all of this because outside of that, you have these. Obviously, I mean, for people who haven't watched it, we, we we can't not we can't talk about it and not spoil it. Really, that's that's the trouble with this. So, really, what you do find out with the show is that the person that's been sort of abusing the the Laura Palmer character, who then is obviously found dead at the very first episode. Uh, was killed by her own dad, it seems, but it was actually her dad was possessed by this entity called Bob. There's some questions about whether her mother had an entity in her all along as well. We could perhaps yes. come to that at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whether that's Judy or whatever, we don't know. <laughs> you know yeah. There's lots yeah. of theories on that one. There's lots of these entities in another dimensional realm. And a big part of the series, you talk, you hear the characters talking about the Blue Rose cases, and it's tied yes. into like Project Blue Book and UFOs, and you've got this character of Major Briggs who's got a listening post out in the woods, and he's listening for these signals that have been coming from space, but also from the woods out into space, and yep. to yep. Uh, Dale Cooper, the FBI agent, and things like that. So, and then initially, you're thinking that it's all about sort of um, possession ghosty type stuff uh ufos and all that but it actually turns out to be something completely different doesn't it so i don't know if you want to talk yeah. a little bit about that i've got a great uh, quote yeah. actually in one of mark frost books we can come to in a minute and read that out. okay yeah sure i i think for me the again the the when it kind of when i was watching this and then it started going from this murder mystery towards this more paranormal uh side of things um my interest got it was even more heightened mm-hmm. um and 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 yeah you know it there's a very strong element of 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 ufology in it um particularly with major briggs who's like you say has this outpost and he's getting the um and he, he finds that weird sim but the signal doesn't he from space there is a lot of ufology uh aspects to twin peaks as you say um major briggs um almost seems to be running the x-files almost yes. within within twin peaks that that seems to be his job but nobody really knows what he does uh he doesn't really He's, he's not very you know he's a bit distant with his own son which which mm-hmm. tells you that he's not he's not 
present as often as he probably could be. Um, interestingly, of course, the guy playing Major Briggs is Scully's dad in the X Files, yeah, so there's yeah, a bit of a crossover yeah, yeah. there. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when it when it kind of kicked into that kind of you. UFOs being involved in, in Twin Peaks, like I say, my interest heightened even more. Mm, mm. Um, so yeah, and and I, and I think the it's all again to do with this kind of interdimensional uh, frequency based. Um, the owls are not what they seem. That's one of the lines from 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 Twin Peaks. The owls are not what they seem. Yeah. And actually, if you look at a lot of abduction cases, um, a lot of people actually mistake or see uh, aliens as owls. Mm, mm. And um, and I've always thought there's something there in that quote. I always think that they're intimating there that that about aliens essentially. Mm, mm. Um, and in fact, just slightly off topic, a fantastic book by a guy called Mike Cleland um, called The Messengers about yes. people that have, have, have had abduction cases. And, I've read it. Yeah, it's a great book. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And synchronicity is all linked with owls. Mm. Um, you just know, to tell so... you a little story, because I work at, just to give you something else back on this one as well. I work in uh, elderly healthcare. Um, obviously, I can't say too much about it because of the, the nature of confidentiality and that. Yes. But when we take our break sometimes at night, because I work night shifts, um, we nip outside. And whenever there's something going on with the health of the, the, the people that live there, yeah. you know, the owl suiting. Really? And it always synchronizes with when we're coming up to maybe a death or something like that. Can they know? That's fascinating. And with something That's we all say, we all say, "Oh, the owls are hooting." And wow, something's, something's going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that links into this book because it talks mm -hmm. about these people yeah, yeah. and and it's whenever they go they're going through uh, a rough patch in their life or something. You know, there's this kind of this. Um, similarity in all these stories something big is happening in their life and they encounter mm -hmm. this uh, one one always sticks out in my mind about this lady that was pulling onto her drive and there was like a four and a half foot owl stood at the edge of her driveway uh, um and it's obviously not an owl i mean if, you, yeah, if you're into yeah, course, yeah, you, yeah. You, if you're into ufology then you understand about screen memories and how how these beings could make you think you're seeing things even yeah, though you're yeah. not um but she, she she mentions in her story about how at the time she thought it was absolutely fine why wouldn't there be a four and a half foot owl stood at the end of a drive? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, so I, I, I just think there's always been something in Twin Peaks or it, in that line that has just mm -hmm. always made me think they're referencing ufology there. I think they're mm -hmm. referencing where they're referencing aliens. Yeah, I've seen as we're on the subject, I just thought I'd read that little bit out because I grabbed it out of my book and it might give people who perhaps aren't so familiar with this, just a, a bit of a better perspective on where we're coming from with this because um, these are fascinating books. The, um, the final dossier and uh, the secret history of Twin Peaks. And I mean, it's, it's fascinating what it gets into. It's written by Mark Frost, who co-wrote the show with David Lynch. So, you know, it's it's canon stuff. Um, so this is where um, basically to, uh, Major Briggs having a conversation. Uh, I think it was Douglas Milford, actually, was the character. Was he, he was... Was he the mayor or was he the editor of the newspaper? I can't. It was the two brothers, weren't they? And the one isn't he the old guy that gets married to the yeah, young yeah, yeah. girl? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is um, so it was Douglas Milford actually, and he was involved with that same project basically that Major Briggs was involved with. You know, so he says, "I believe that we were able to look deeply at the whole of human history. We would see that they have they have always been here." So he's a bit of an amorphous they. But in this yes. context, I think he's talking about you know, uh, aliens, things like that. Yeah, um, I believe they have observed, helped, haunted, tormented and teased us since the beginning of time for reasons entirely their own. I believe they are a multitude and that their true nature is singular and energetic, not physical, evolved in some way light years beyond our ability to understand. And a consequence of our limited linear sense of time means nothing to them. A few of us were chosen for some strange purpose to learn more about them or perhaps for other reasons. I believe their presence fills more than the skies or these woods. They lie at the root cause of extra every extra normal or paranormal experience our species has recorded. Religious, spiritual, scientific, ghostly, inspirational, angelic and demonic. From the burning bush to Fatima to lords to vampires and sky people, monsters and abductions in the night and Roswell, Homestead, all those strange lights and crafts seen for millennia by so many of his so many skies 
I believe all these phenomena that are puffed up egos and busy ant minds persist in trying to label, categorize, penetrate and comprehend all spring from this same uncanny source. This is the mother of all others. And were we able to set our eyes on this ultimate nature, we would find it as foreign, incomprehensible and indifferent to us as ours would be to bacterial microbes swimming in a drop of water. So that's just summed up to a peak. Yeah. You know, everything I explained at the start about my kind of thoughts on the paranormal, um, mm. he's basically just just kind of said that, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he 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 mentioned every single possible aspect of the paranormal. Of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, UFOs That's to right. ghosts to, to to monsters to to whatever. Um, yeah. So, I, I, and it's a good insight into into you know because obviously Mark Frost co wrote Twin Peaks, as you say. So it's a good mm. insight as to what. They were trying to intimate in the show, and I, I think those books are brilliant. There, yeah, I mean, are, if, yeah, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you if if you're a fan of the show, um, it's almost essential reading. It is, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, um, yeah, it, it yeah. gives you a lot of background information, a lot of stuff that you know you you see in the show, but it doesn't necessarily get tied mm, up. And, and mm. these books tie tie up a lot of loose ends. Obviously, with um, Mark Frost being into Crowley and all theosophy mm. and all that kind of stuff. So he must be aware of all that thought. Again, it's one of those things that we could talk great length here. It's too too long to talk about it, really. This idea, people like Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard yep. going off into the desert and doing these um, rituals, the Babylon work in the Alamantra ritual to summon forth the great beast, the Scarlet Woman, all that kind of thing. And um, that kind of, in the books, actually, it, it kind of intimates that Jack Parsons was was in in that kind of circle of things doing at that time the bomb testing in the desert roswell yes, all that yeah, kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and so Jack, is that is that the guy who it's been a while since i read that book is he the guy who oh, is it they basically they, rockets, they, was it like that? uh, that's it yeah they, they yeah. recruit him into to work in this kind of rocket program or something he, he worked for him? jpl he was one of the founders of jpl actually yeah that's and they it, were yeah. all yeah. they were all occultist early days of nasa and jpl yeah. they were all yeah well, i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, it, I'd, I'd really be interested to see how much input Mark Frost and David Lynch had in in the show because and um, me, I'd love to I'd love to do an interview I'd love some some way but I doubt they'd very much I'd very much no Mark no, Frost no, may no. be a bit more than David Lynch David Lynch is impenetrable he just well yeah I mean uh, just uh, just before we go a bit onto that but I, mm. that interview with David Lynch always sticks out to me where he says something like a razor head is is my most spiritual film and mm. the interviewer says would you care to elaborate on that and david yeah, lynch yeah. just saying yeah <laughs> that's it yeah. um he says it's my most spiritual film and yeah um, the interviewer says well could, can you elaborate on that and david lynch says no no and that's it, <laughs> that's and, it. And, and, and end of the conversation <laughs> um so yeah mark frost is always a bit more open Mm. Um, and maybe not open. Maybe you could just understand him a bit more because David Lynch yeah. kind of talks in these surreal terms. Mm. Um, I, I was always under the impression that when when something was surreal in Twin Peaks, you're getting David Lynch. When yes. something is a bit more earthly, not not earthly. I'm talking about UFOs and stuff, mm. um, or ritualistic. You're getting mm. Mark Frost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and even the the there's a Masonic element to, to a, a huge oh, Masonic huge element to yeah, Twin yeah, Peaks, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, um, and which black, would large, come white, from large. The, yeah. uh, the black the, the the term large the fact they've got the mm -hmm. black and white floor, yeah, um, yeah. Up, the, up, the up, ring up, is almost Masonic. It's almost the the Masonic ring, the, the, square, the symbol, yeah, the yeah, symbol, yeah, the yeah. compass and the square. You've got um, the uh, Cooper, I believe, actually wears a Masonic badge. I think he does at one point in the show. Yeah, at yeah. some point, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and and I think I think that's Mark Frost. Mm -hmm. I, I do. Think that's coming uh, definitely because that's connected. That's connected to the Alistair Crowley type thing and the ritual yeah, thing. It is, um, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. and again, in in the dossier book that you've got there, there's even mm. a picture of a Masonic apron. I think. Yeah, um, I mean, even the front somewhere cover is practically Masonic with the pyramid and the. You there you know, go. Yeah. 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 So it's. Um, there's a huge Masonic element to the show, and I, and I do believe mm. that that's, that's Mark Frost. Yeah. What, funnily enough, actually, I'll, let me just pull this up. If I can find the file. I've probably lost it now. I'll shut my computer down, but just bear with me two seconds. I'll find it. Okay. Yeah, because one of, one of the things that I did was actually just out of curiosity, I just, because I recently did a, a bit of a rewatch of um, Twin Peaks, and I put yep. together a list of... Um, 
<laughs> yeah, basically, I put together a list of all the things that kind of tie into the research that I do. And, and I suppose what, you know, obviously what you do as well. So these are things that are in the show and in Firewalk With Me, the film. So these are just generic things. That are so you got Freemasonry, black and white lodges, energy and consciousness, energy, energy grids, frequencies, ley lines, EMF phenomenon. Uh, Native American beliefs, transmutation, divination, alchemy, occultism, the assassination of JFK, uh, missing persons in the wilderness, portals to other realms, dimensions, the seven portals, the hell gate, alternative realities, possession, doppelgangers, dugpas, tulpas, entities from elsewhere, and this is my just a generic term, some energy vampirism and Garmin Bozier. We can talk about that in a minute as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, alien abduction, UFOs, Roswell, Project Blue Book, SETI, owls and owl symbolism, burial mounds, <laughs> bones of giants, and by extension, a race of giants such as the firemen, stone circles, <laughs> geological phenomena, silver and gold symbolism, solar symbolism, fire symbolism, Saturn symbolism, uh, White Sands, the Manhattan Project and the Trinity Bomb Test, the number seven, Psychotropics, MK Ultra, Visions, Altered State, Psycho, New Age Mysticism, Ritual Sacrifice, Ritual Sex Magic, the Babylon Ritual. Um, and then these are things that cross into the books as well, which are also, so you got things like yep. Project Sign, Project Grudge, Majestic 12, Kenneth Arnold, Lemurians, the Shaver Mysteries, Mental Transmissions and Telepathy, the OSS and the CIA, Operation Paperclip, Jack Parsons, Theosophy, God Consciousness, Illuminati and Skull and Bones, Council on Foreign Relations, Project Aquarius, <laughs> Project Gleam, Pine Gap, Dulce, Dums, St St uh, Strategic Defense Initiative. I, I mean, I mean, that's just crazy, isn't it? It's a 101 of conspiracy theories. It is, isn't it? Yeah. No, well, people like me, I mean, you know, it's like, it's, come on. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think i think actually you know thinking about it we, we we both share a lot of conspiracy minded friends i think they would be more inclined to enjoy twin peaks than thing than you know yeah than somebody else and it's one of those strange things because the amount of people i i know pro probably the same with you as well meet them at talks when you go to other people's talks you talk online all that kind of thing yeah never, never watched it no never watched, never watched it watched or they're it. just oh that's that david lynch thing isn't it with laura palmer who killed Laura Palmer? That's that's yeah. that's it, isn't it? You know. Yeah, they, I mean, you know, I mean, I can't, I can't even remember why I started watching Twin Peaks. I remember I had one of those dodgy fire sticks at the time, so I had, I had access to this <laughs> or, this whole world of programs that I didn't normally have access to, and it, I think, I think I, I, I tell you what it was. I was I, I was searching because um, when when Twin Peaks came out, I was like one or two mm. years old so not quite old enough to watch it yeah um so i I'd was lost you <laughs> Showing my... i'll tell you a funny story about that in a minute yeah go on <laughs> um i was what i'd watch lost and i think i googled programs like lost mm -hmm. or something yeah they and... would say the prisoner there's another one Very yeah yeah that, yeah yeah and, yeah and so all these programs got thrown up uh, there was one called fringe i think or something like mm. that which I, I, yeah. never, I never got into that's another um, jj abrams but... type but yeah, I, get, I gave Twin Peaks a go, um, and I watched like the first five episodes and really liked it. And then I, mm. I watched them again because I made my wife watch it, um, and then we just binged it. And we just happened yeah. to yeah, have yeah. done it. I think it was about six months before season three came out, so we did it. It was good timing, really. Mm. Um, but I tell you what, though, it obsessed my life for about six months. I was obsessed right. with it. Yeah, yeah. Trying to figure it out, trying to mm, get mm. the theories, trying to understand mm. what the hell was going on. Um, so yeah, mm. um, yeah, yeah. I watched it. Uh, well, I was. Let me put it this way: I didn't really watch it until about fifteen years ago. Um, I, I was aware of it, but see, what happened was when it first aired on UK TV. I, I'm old enough to remember when it aired the first time on UK TV, and there was a massive storm in the Midlands. Uh, that right. night and I was on my own in the house and I was freaked out by this storm, thought the roof was going to come crashing in. So I nipped round to my neighbors and, and said, do you mind if I stay here for a bit? Cause I'm freaked out by this storm that's going on. And uh, they were massive twin peaks fans. And it was the final episode of season two. The one, <laughs> right. the biggie, yeah, yeah. you know, at the time yeah. they're sitting there watching it. And there's me going on about the trees falling down in the garden and all this kind of <laughs> <laughs> talking all the way through this mammoth epic 
because in those days they didn't repeat things either. They never did no, find no. out what happened to uh, <laughs> Where's Annie? <laughs> where's Annie? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they like me very much. <laughs> no. But, uh, no. For them, yeah. I did watch it though. You know, I went back to it and I loved it. I got into it and um, it kind of cemented it for me after season three. Because again, I'm not I'm not going to monopolize your time here, but I've talked about it on other places and I probably will cover it in another video at some point in the future. But I had a, a very unusual, uh, what I call a reality shift uh, for an extended period of time in 2016 in my life. And um, whereas basically my memories did not match up with what other people were talking to me about in yeah. my life. It happened yeah. for, it went on for quite a few months, freaked me right out and... I don't know if it was some sort of like mind over matter type thing, but I I basically didn't want wanted to happen and it stopped, and then instantly really? regretted it. Regretted it. I wanted it to happen. I've had one one, I think it was a year or two ago. I had a, a couple of days where it started again, and I thought, right, let's go. Didn't happen again after that. Um, but um, I would wasn't even aware of the Mandela effect or any of that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I I've, I found out about that after these experiences I'd had. And then, obviously, because this was 2016, then saw season three in 2017, watching these last few episodes where, spoiler alert for those people who haven't watched it yet, um, basically Dale Cooper prevents Laura Palmer and creates like this tangent reality, yeah. as it were, yeah. uh, where everything's different. And, um, you know, Carrie Page, is the, she's Laura Palmer effectively, but she can't remember being Laura Palmer till she yeah. goes to the house at the end and that we talked about the woman who owned the real house in real life. We can come into that as well. And yeah. when I watched it, I was just blown away. I thought, I wonder if David Lynch has somehow tapped into something that I tapped into. That's the only thing it's, I can it's think. It's possible. I've, I've, just I've, in a different way I, it happened, you know. I've heard of the Mandela effect. I've never come across anyone like yourself who's had that, who's had that mm. experience though. I've come um, across it since, since I found out, you know, started looking into it. I've heard stories, but of course, you don't know if people are just making this stuff up. I, I would accept it if somebody said it to me. If somebody said, you know, just uh, if I really went into the depths of the whole story, um, you know, there's going to be people who say, I'm skeptical. I don't, that's fine. I get that. I understand that because I'm the same sometimes with things when people, people tell me some, some right flights of fancy. I'm obviously open enough to try and accept, you know, to give yeah. them the benefit of the doubt. But there's times where I'm scratching my head and thinking, really you know yeah maybe yeah, yeah, i mean it's yeah. just unique to everybody's individual experience isn't it that's the problem well, you know? well, well again as i said earlier you know if we're creating our own reality um mm. then then yeah we, it, it, every person's perception of the universe is is individual mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. different do, do you want to talk a little bit about that about the um that that sort of alternate reality type thing because we talked just before we came on camera about um Audrey Horn as well, didn't we? I don't know if you want your insights on that about the, what that might be this sort of tangent reality that's going on in the show. If that's yeah, uh, like a yeah, parallel think... universe, or if it's something meta to do with the show itself, and well, well, and and that's it. I, there's 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 a four and a half hour documentary on YouTube by a guy who um who who basically it's a diploma in the uh, in mm. Twin Peaks, and I think mm. he's done like another two hours since then he's done quite a few and more he, since hasn't he yeah 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 he's done a lot and and he basically um puts the point across that twin peaks is is a self-aware tv show and um as i mentioned earlier you know it, it was created by david lynch as this anti-tv program to, to to go against what the tv programs were were like in mm. those days although it had elements of all of those tv shows it did yeah it had the, the elements of the soap opera it had it even had a mock the, soap opera didn't it in the in it had the, 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 the mock soap opera you know, in there, was yeah, going on the, in the background while the real yeah, things yeah, were showing in, happening yeah. invitation invitation to love or whatever love it was called it, yeah. <laughs> um, and 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 in the soap opera as as the program as twin peaks progresses you see more of the soap opera because people are watching it on telly mm. and um one of the storylines is about how um two of the characters are played by the same actress and then in twin peaks the like the girl that plays uh laura palmer um comes back and plays laura palmer's cousin yeah Maddie, so yeah. it's it's mirroring the soap mm. opera that's happening on telly yeah, yeah so um so this guy puts across that, that it's it's essentially a self-aware tv program and there are different elements within the show that are mimicking real life and mimicking the, the world of tv um and dale cooper is essentially us 
So mm. we are the investigators. We want to know what's happened. We want to know what's going on. And he is the the um, the manifestation of the audience within the TV show, trying to find out what's going on. Mm. And there's violence within the TV show. There's this guy called Bob who's possessing people and killing people. And that is the violence of the TV world. That is the violence mm, mm. that we we have grown to love, that we want to consume from TV. We want violence. We want to know who killed that person. Why did they kill them? I mean, nowadays, you look at how many people are obsessed with serial killer document, you know, some yeah. really sick stuff that pe- people actually enjoy sitting and watching. It's bizarre, um, you know, because just, just to interject just for one second, I don't, I, I had a, I did a recorded an interview recently with um, a discussion about Metropolis with Mark Devlin. And we were talking about this idea of people wanting that sort of the violence and the and the, ju- yeah. the justice account. And I don't generally tend to get drawn to those types of programs. They're not that I prefer something much more lighthearted, mm. happier, more positive. Yeah, yeah. So it's unusual for me to find something so with Twin Peaks, because on any given day, I hold Twin Peaks up as probably one of my one of the best TV shows ever made. Yeah, I, I think it's because Strange. it's almost it's done, weird. It's done. To, it's done tongue in cheek, though. Almost. Mm, mm. Um, it is this kind of meta of 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 of, of you know of, of what's going on in the real world, and 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 what's interesting is when you then watch. I mean, I, I could go really into again, probably a whole show in itself, but I would just tell anyone go and watch the four and a half hour documentary on mm-hmm. YouTube. I, I, I've actually watched that more times than I've watched Twin Peaks. It is. It's. It is mind blowing. It mm. the, the guy in my mind, the guy has nailed it. And of course, people disagree with him, but that's yeah. what that's what that's what David Lynch is all about. Unless until David Lynch comes out and tells Says us what it. Twin Peaks is about, we will never yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when you look at season three, which happened, you know, twenty five years after season one uh, and season two, that the world has changed. Um, mm. Our mm. world has changed. You know, yeah, yeah. As I say, that TV and film has got a lot more violent. Mm-hmm. The world has got a lot more violent. Mm. People's attention spans have shrunk thanks oh. to things like social media and stuff like that. Mm. So people that were watching twi- the season three of Twin Peaks, well, firstly, the vast majority of it doesn't actually happen in Twin Peaks. No, it doesn't. And I remember reading reviews at the time of people saying, this isn't Twin Peaks. The, those lovable characters that we it's have weird, isn't it? are, yeah. are, are, are gone. You know, this, mm. the, lovable, the lovable characters have gone. There's a lot more violence in this than there was in, in, in the other seasons. Mm. And, and that's David Lynch basically, once again, mirroring mm. what's happening on today's TV. So mm-hmm. he's taken, he did it in the old series and he's doing it now. He, mm. There's more violence because there is more violence on TV, mm. and some of the things that are in season three really cement this theory for me. And there's two things that stand out. There's the what? There's the, the there's the bit where the, the a child gets run over and killed. Oh yeah, yeah. And it, and and that is a harrowing, I mean, isn't it? It's, yeah, yeah, it's yes, really... yes. D- David Lynch is very um, he likes his kind of extended scenes. You know, that famous mm. scene with the guy sweeping the floor in the bar for about three hours. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and 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 this scene was extended almost to the point where you were like, "Come on now, this is enough." You know, just this yeah, woman yeah. cradling her dead son. Yeah. Um, and and while that's happening, you have this crowd of people stood around her, watching her, yeah, but yeah. doing nothing about it. None yeah. of them are helping her. None of them are stepping in. They're just watching. And mm. to me, that is um, symbolism. It's a metaphor for what happens in, in the real world and on TV. Mm. These people are watching the TV and yeah. these, 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 these two characters, the dead son and, and the mother are the TV characters. Yeah. And therefore these people are consuming the violence. They want the violence. They're, they're soaking it in. Um, they're not doing anything about it. They're not getting involved. They're not getting attached at the end of the program. They turn the TV off and they go and make their tea, but they've consumed yeah. their violence. Yeah, and and yeah. so that's, that scene really sticks out to me. And the other scene is the one that happens pretty much at the start where there's, you've got this big box and there's, oh, there's this the big box, yeah. glass box. Yeah. And mm. um, there's this guy who's sitting there with a coffee or whatever. He's watching this box and you learn that that's his job. He's, he's being paid to watch the box. He doesn't know why, but he's being paid to watch the box. Mm. And then he's, he's, his girlfriend comes around, brings him a coffee and they're sat together watching the box. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they, start to strip naked and start to have <laughs> sex in front of the box. And then yeah. this big, the, the, the monster or whatever you want to call it, Judy or whatever mm-hmm. com, comes into the box and kills them and attacks them. Yeah. Now I think that is essentially David Lynch's version of Netflix and chill. Mm. So they are watching the box. They are watching the TV. 
They are making out in front of the TV like you would as a couple. And all of a sudden, violence. Just Mm. like Mm. what's on TV now. We're consumed with violence. So this monster comes in, it attacks them, it kills them. Metaphorically, Mm. it kills them in the show, but I think it's supposed to be a metaphor. And therefore, they they have consumed the violence from the box, which is the TV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So those two scenes... Those two scenes really stick out for me. That what mm. David Lynch is doing here is he has created a program, uh, a series that is essentially mimicking and mocking TV programs. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a that that famous scene in Firewalk with Me where you see Bowie as Philip Jeffries, you know, and he says, "We're yeah. I'm not going to talk about Judy. In fact, we're not going to talk yeah. about Judy. You know that kind of thing." And I I thought my interpretation of that was. When you look at what happened with the show, that they forced him to resolve the murder mystery, then he left and they came back and directed the end. And then the film comes along. But he, I, I mean, at this point, he was still making the film. So after the fact, when it was released, people were saying, again, like season three, they were saying, where's all the other characters in the show? You know, this is just about Leyland Palmer and Laura Palmer and Bob and kind of right down. And I'm thinking if if we extend that nap, uh, that metaphor with Judy, He's he when he's saying we're not going to talk about Judy. He's like we're not going to talk about what Twin Peaks was yes. before. This is now yeah. something completely different. Absolutely, you know? I, I I think again, you know, we I don't think we've really covered that yet. But yeah, Dave, David Lynch wanted to extend this murder mystery because he didn't want mm. to have this kind of this this monster a week type format that the the TV shows had back in the nineties. So, um, but the 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 studio were pressuring and pressuring him to reveal who the murderer was. So I think it was episode seven of season two where it was revealed who the, who the murderer was. At that point, David Lynch leaves Twin Peaks. And to be honest, Twin Peaks goes a bit downhill for the rest of the season. I um, think until Windham Mill comes into it again. I, I like it. From I think, I think, I think it, yeah. it's about then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then David and then David Lynch comes back in and, 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 and essentially does the last episode of, of season two. Mm. And then you get the film. Yeah. And, and I think what it is, is, Every, I think the film was his way of saying, um, no, tough. Like you, I wanted to to all of the stuff I wanted to put in the program. I'm now going to put in the film because yeah, 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 because I can. And a lot of people said that. Like we, we've already been through this. We've already seen Laura Palmer's death. Why do we need to see? You know, why do, why are you why are you still focusing on that? Yeah, but it's because yeah. you you took it away from him in the mm, in, in the mm, series. You mm. you 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 made him reveal the murderer. And I think mm. that was his way of saying. So now I'm going to give it you like twice as thick. Now mm-hmm, you're going to get mm-hmm. you're going to get it double, um, and it's a great it's a great film. And again, mm-hmm. lots of elements in that 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 lend itself to this kind of meta kind of mocking of a of mm. of, of a reality. Um, yeah, and 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 I I genuinely believe that that's what David Lynch is trying to to put mm-hmm. across. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that. Yeah, yeah. I like the fact that uh, an additional layer to this show is like we were saying about the research that we do. Uh, that tends to be, for me, I feel like it's a lot more of the Mark Frost stuff, which I that I really yes. can sort of relate to it on that level. But I also love the the sort of a bizarre level of it that David Lynch is on, which is very much like Stanley Kubrick with his films. You know, it's that kind of yeah. putting it out there, leaving it for the audience to interpret for themselves. Yes. You know, I'm not going to tell yeah. you what it means. You know, it's they yeah, probably do yeah. know themselves. I thought about this though, Carl. Mm. Like, like I, I think David Lynch is a clever guy. Um, how much of it does he actually know? I mean, I've, I've just kind of sat there and said, I think, I think there's a theory to it, and I think David Lynch knew what he was doing. But you know, you'd be forgiven for thinking, did he, or does he just kind mm. of throw crap at a wall, sees what sticks, kind sticks. of thing, and then I think you probably yeah, would, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I don't, I don't know. Um, mm. I think, I think they needed each other. <laughs> it's quite interesting actually, because one of the best quotes I, I, I've read from David Lynch was he talks about the the white picket fence, and he's very much about balance. And if you watch his films mm. and, and mm. Twin Peaks, it's about um, light and dark and good and yeah, evil. Yeah. And he talks about the the white picket fence, and it looks beautiful, and it's a great little clean, nice, beautiful fence. And it's and when you look at the bottom of the fence, you start to see the bugs and the muck and the mud and the dirt, and it's a stark contrast to the white, beautiful fence. It is. You need it. You need it. You need the 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 muck and the dirt in order to appreciate Mm -hmm. the beautiful white picket fence. So it's almost like you need the evil. 
in the world to, to mm, shine mm. a light on, on on the good in the world. And 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 just like there's balance there, I think there's balance with Lynch and Frost. And I think if it wasn't for Frost, I think we would have had this incredibly overly surreal program that we wouldn't have been able to interpret. Yeah, we yeah, wouldn't yeah. have known anything about. Um, and I think if it hadn't have been for Lynch, then we might have ended up with essentially just a standard murder mystery program. Mm, it's mm. probably somewhere that Mark Frost would have taken it. Yeah. With, with, yeah. with, a, with a touch of paranormal. Maybe a uh, touch so of I the think... X-Files type of thing. Exactly, yeah. Play yeah. that but, territory, yeah. But I think together, they, they lend to each other really, really well. Mm, um, yeah. and, and, and like I said, you know, I would love to have been there in the writing process because I think Me. there mm. would have been some arguments. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. you would have had Lynch saying, I want to take it this way. You would have had Frost saying, I want to. And this is why it's so good, how they've managed to achieve this, this program mm. where they've managed to capture both of their ideas. And let's be honest, they're completely different ideas. They are. But they've yeah, managed, yeah, yeah. They've managed yeah. to capture them both and, yeah. put, and put them into a coherent storyline. And, mm, and I think mm. that is the that is the sheer talent. Right mm, mm. I can't help but sometimes take uh, what I would call the Mark Frost stuff very literal. Sometimes maybe that's because yeah. of the type of research I do. But yeah. you know, I interpret things literally as uh, other dimensions. You know, God consciousness, Akashic record, morphic resonance, all that kind of stuff energy uh, but then sometimes when you see david lynch and he's he does and he's going on about electricity and he's doing all this thing with his hands he's got a lot of frequency <laughs> thing and all that and you're thinking yeah. unless he's got parkinson's you know <laughs> coming on <laughs> but you know he's like it's almost like the, you think yeah he, well he does get it as well he does get yeah. that you know they, 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 they must there must be some common ground between the two mm. of them yeah, yeah when they were sat down right in the program mm -hmm. there must have been enough common ground for them to to be able to write a program together yeah, yeah, um, yeah, but I, I, I can guarantee there were some frustrations from both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah towards yeah, each other. So. People can even look at this and go, "Oh, this is interesting." Mm. Or, uh, yeah, we've, that guy, we've, we've that touched all. The, yeah, we're all the all the touchstones are there, aren't there? We've mentioned about you know the, this great evil. I mean, when I'd, I'd like to sort of at some point maybe get into this idea of like um, you know the the fireman and the, and the 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 yes. arm and the, all that all these entities that live in you know what what what's that all about Where do they again, live? Yeah, yeah. a lot of that is interpretation isn't it you know and yes, sometimes yeah. you look at a room there's there's elements of the red room that sometimes that feel like it's quite sort of a peaceful place but it's clearly within the back lodge and then there's yes. elements that were referred to as being within the white lodge but they look very like dark and demonic and uh, so it's what it's what you were saying about is nothing's ever cut and dried there's there's a very fine line between you know, it's in the grey, isn't it? You know, you've got these extremes, it's, it's, but it's in the grey. It's the balance, like I've said. You know, it's yeah, this yeah, kind of, yeah. and, and and what you've just said, you know, with the giant, the fireman, uh, and the arm. Again, you've got the balance. You've got mm. the, the the fireman that releases Laura Palmer into the world, and you've got the arm and the lodge that releases Bob into the world. So it's almost yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that they are the 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 parents of good and good mm. versus evil. Um, yeah, and they've they've unleashed it onto the world, and and yeah, yeah. the battle has taken place. Some thoughts before we go, before we wrap these things up, because I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to get your take on this one. That whatever that is that's going on with with Sarah Palmer in the third season, and it, it's yeah. generally there's a general consensus that is Judy, although some people have said not necessarily. I mean, what's your take on that? And the other thing would so, be, was it there all along from because it's implied and it's actually stated by Mark Frost in the book that 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 thing that came out of the desert when the atomic bomb yeah. went off, yeah. went it went into Sarah Palmer. How, yeah. Was it dormant? Was it asleep? A bit like Bob was as a child with, because he was, because Leyland was very young, wasn't he? When he was possessed by Bob. Yes. If I remember yeah. rightly. Yeah. So yeah. Did, were they both, you know, and it, if you read was... the thing about Bob and, and Judy, it's like almost like the marriage of the two things to create the great evil. Yet they're living under the same house together, married and yeah. right. So <laughs> what's, what's that about? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> I, I think the yeah, there's the bug that crawls into that girl's mouth. Um, it's never actually directly implied in the program, is it? That that is Sarah Palmer. No, the book says outright it but is. But the book, the yeah, book goes on to say that outright. it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, I think it crawls into her mouth. So it's laid there dormant, and then we there's obviously the famous scene in season three where she takes her face, her face oh, off, yeah, and there's yeah, this yeah. thing there. Yeah. Um, I mean awful cgi really but 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 
scary. I like it though. I, I like it. It, it's, it, it, it's it, it lends itself freaky. to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, if I was to go down the the route of this kind of meta TV show that we've spoke about, I, I, mm. you would say that it was around that time that TV was created, and so um, not well, not that it was created, but like people started to watch soap operas at home. So people didn't go out to the film, to cinemas anymore. It was around the, that time where Sarah Palmer was a girl that they're mm. watching TV shows at home. So they're beginning to consume this 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 violence mm. or this stuff mm. at home. Mm. So is, is that a metaphor for her swallowing this violence, swallowing this mm. this kind of consumerism? Um, mm. People people say that that's the case. Um, in terms of Judy and Bob, you're absolutely right. I... I I, we still don't really know what who Judy is. No, no. We shouldn't <laughs> I mean, really Bob... be talking about Judy, should we? <laughs> <laughs> We're not like, going to talk know... about her at all. <laughs> <laughs> but Bob is Bob is Bob, and we know who Bob is. And Bob mm. is um, a an evil entity that possesses people and and, and feeds off feeds off death and, mm. and negativity. Mm. Um, we don't really know who Judy is. I mean, it, it, again, it's implied that she is. She is born out of this atomic blast in the in the desert, and and mm. and she's born, and then she she vomits, doesn't she, and, and gives birth to Bob's face. So Judy, doesn't is Gordon Bob Cole call her Jowday? She was Jowday. Jowday. She's Jowday. going into sort of mythology of going like the great evil going way back in yes, religious yeah. texts and things like that. Yeah, and and I think he 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 likens it to the jinn or something as mm. well. Which yeah, of course yeah, is yeah. The the evil entities, mm. um, but. I, that this this monster Judy give throws up and kind of vomits this ectoplasm that that uh, and Bob's face is in it. So mm. Judy is Bob's mom. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so I, I personally I, I think if you take season eight at face value, then Judy is um, is um, the birth of evil, the the atomic mm. bomb. David yeah. Lynch clearly sees that as a time when. I mean, obviously, evil has been around before, but mm, um, course, yes. just just for this purpose, it's the birth of evil, and that evil has then created Bob, and Bob is the evil that we consume on mm. TV mm-hmm. because she she throws up loads of little things you don't really see. You only really see Bob, so mm. Bob is the TV violence, but she might have thrown up other things like um, real life violence and something else mm. that is vile mm. and something else that is evil. All these little things, but you only really see Bob. So I, I think it's the but what you're seeing is the birth of TV violence. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. And, and Bob is and interestingly, um, I you you will know this. Um, the guy that plays Bob, it was an it was accident, a happy accident, wasn't, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He he was he was um was he like a cameraman like a or a sound decorator man or... or something like that? Yeah, it was yeah. technical crew, wasn't he? Something like that. Yeah. And they they accidentally caught him in the mirror while they were filming a scene. He yeah. appeared in the mirror. Um. And so they went, oh, that's good. We'll, we'll go with him. Mm. Um, so again, you, even there, you have this kind of, even though it's an accident, but you have this crossover of a real-life person mm. playing mm. A, a, a character in, in, in a program yeah. almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So th- that's always interested me. But yeah, mm. so I think, I think Bob is the personification of TV violence. And what you see mm. in episode eight is Judy if that is Judy, because we don't really know, giving yeah. birth to the, the only thing that I think that, that mean that makes you makes it possible to say that it is Judy is that Mr. C, the, the, the bad, the bad doppelganger has that card with the picture of mm. uh, the, the round circle with the little horns on. And that's if right. you look at the, the monster that's coming out of the atomic bomb, she has these little kind of horns she on does. her head. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and he refers to the card as Judy, so mm. therefore that means that monster must be must must be Judy as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think we need to do another program. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's <laughs> loads we could talk it. about. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to I don't want to hold you up anymore because I know you've got things to do. But uh, uh, for now, I just want to say thank you so much for doing this. It's been an absolute treat for me. It really has because I've been dying to talk to somebody about the uh, <laughs> the esoteric meta levels of of twin peaks you know yeah, yeah. so great um, yeah really appreciate it thank you so much kieran yeah no problem thank you for having all me. right you're welcome you're welcome so uh yeah hopefully we'll get together and do some more at some yes. point uh, yeah let me know and we'll yep. we'll arrange that yeah yeah that's the plan 
Uh, and for whoever's watching this, you know, it's a bit of an acquired taste. But I will say, if you have enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff that YouTube hates, but we love if we're, we try our best anyway. Thank you again to Kieran. And I will see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.